Hi, everyone. Um, this is like really terrifying. Um, so my friend and I were talking maybe like a month ago. And we were talking about like wanting to teach an ego class together. It was actually like more me that needs to do this class more than anything because she's like, I don't, she has already like taught a bunch of classes. Um, if anything, I'm doing this for my ego because my ego is like terrified of looking stupid. And um, yeah, so if anything, I'm doing this for my ego, um, kind of like shoving myself to do this. I've never actually gone live on YouTube before. Um, but for those of you who don't know me, hello, my name is Demi. I'm from San Diego. Um, basically a little bit about me. I have been taking like spiritual development classes. Um, I would more so call them like higher self classes and subconscious repro reprogramming classes since I was like 15 or 16. Um, so I got into that in high school and basically like the higher self classes just kind of, it teaches you to like go into that piece of you that can manifest anything, that can be happy, that can heal from anything, that can kind of like go beyond your ego and like go beyond like the insecure you and um, see things like from a perspective free from like emotion and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the subconscious reprogramming classes I've taken, I've taken like a bunch. Um, and by the way, I've taken like all my classes through Marissa Morris. Um, she is my teacher. She's awesome. If you guys are in San Diego, um, highly actually, she just moved to Vegas. Um, but she teaches on Zoom and she's awesome. Um, so I've learned pretty much like everything I know from her. I'm not an expert. Um, if I was, I probably wouldn't need all these classes. Um, so I'm not an expert. All I really know um, from just being like a young 20 something person trying to like have a happy life and learn as I go is what I've learned is um, I've learned to like be able to take my attention and kind of go into like a different mindset mindset or perspective. So anytime I've ever been like frustrated or annoyed or angry or upset or irritated, um, all having to do with the ego, um, I'm able to like go into like a different perspective and kind of like see from every angle and be like, oh, like, okay, like, I'm really upset right now, but it's my 13-year-old, and she's upset because of this. Um, I think, if anything, what the world needs right now, um, well, if any, what I need right now, and I think, like, what other people could probably benefit from is understanding emotions, because when you understand emotions and when you understand, like, who you are, um, then you get into these situations where instead of, like, getting reactive or like getting upset you can kind of like take a step back um because like basically what I've learned from taking all these classes is anytime you are feeling any kind of emotion whether it's um anger sadness frustration agitation like loneliness any of those human emotions you're basically in a younger aspect of yourself um like something hasn't really been healed so where the ego comes in is basically your ego um i actually because i'm a nerd um i made a powerpoint so i'm gonna read from my powerpoint um and it's just easier that way so basically from what i understand your ego is the you that is basically in fear, but it doesn't really want other people to know that it's in fear because um, it doesn't really want to show weakness. So your ego is the fearful version of yourself that um, pretends that it's not. Um, and it's the you that has something to prove. So anytime you feel like you have something to prove, anytime you, you do something so that someone else can see, that's your ego. Um, your ego is not necessarily... Um, always like egotistical and prideful um a lot of the times like your ego could be like super super shy and quiet almost to the point of like um like hiding yourself because 
you need people to know, like you need to prove to people that you're quiet and you're nice. So your ego can be like a whole bunch of things. Um, from what I've learned, taking all these classes, the spirit, like your human spirit is basically the opposite of your ego. So your spirit is um, the you that's brave. It's just brave. It doesn't care if someone's watching. It doesn't care to look. It doesn't care about looking stupid. It doesn't care about messing up. It doesn't care about like, oh my God, I have to like look a certain way. I have to do my hair and makeup and oh, they're going to think I'm stupid. Like basically it's, um, it's like that inner child. Like kids are so good at, um, being their spirit because they just jump in the water and play and laugh and they don't care. And they, they don't, it's like, they don't really have that like self-consciousness that you get when you, um, start to like make friends and start to like maybe go into um like middle school or something like that so from what i understand the ego is the you that just has something to prove um so how could you balance your ego so basically and again i'm like kind of reading off a powerpoint kind of not um So you can use your ego to be a happy, successful person. Like your ego is not necessarily, like I hear all the time, like kill your ego, like your ego is horrible. Like your ego, if anything, just needs like the proper attention. Like your ego needs to be nurtured. So it's not about like destroying the ego, just about balancing it. Um, Think about all the situations in your life that you actually um, got there because of your ego. Maybe you were like out at a bar or something and you went up and talked to someone um, because you had like a couple drinks or something. And so you're feeling confident. You wouldn't have like gone up to talk to that person had it not been for your ego to kind of like shove you out there and be like, go do it. Um, So sometimes like your ego um, can help you like get to the places you want to go. So it's not always bad because what if you... um, we're too afraid to go talk to that person. And like, that could have been your soulmate kind of thing. Um, so hypothetically, like, let's say you grew up really, um, shy, like you grew up really shy. Like that's how your parents, the people around you taught you, you should, you should be. So you grew up really shy, quiet, bookworm kind of person. Um, so later on in life, your ego causes you to be like the opposite of shy. So you become super talkative, super outgoing, almost to the point of being annoying to prove to people that you're actually outgoing. Um, But the key is like, you're, you're trying to prove something. Um, So you can take the pieces of that shy you, you can take pieces of that outgoing you, the you that is trying to prove something. Um, And you can create who you are and you can be proud of who you are And you can be happy at the person that you see in the mirror when you take bits and pieces of just like the you that you want to be. Like you can be anything you want. Like this is where astrology gets kind of tricky um, because astrology tells you like in a defined way, like this is who you are. Like, oh, you're a Gemini. Oh, makes sense. Like you're such a Gemini. Well, what if you want to be more like a Scorpio? What if you want to be more like a Sagittarius? Like you have the total free will and the ability to be any quality you want, no matter, you know, if you were taught that it was bad growing up. So, um, so as an example, like let's say growing up, you had a bad relationship with your dad. So you have a bad relationship growing up with your dad. Um, But because of that relationship with your dad, you became a very independent person. You traveled the world. Like, he pushed you to want to, um, like, you felt like you had something to prove to him. Like, he maybe, your dad was maybe like, oh, you'll never make it. So you, like, want to prove to him. So you grow up um, making tons of money, successful, traveling the world, like, being a successful maybe business person, making a ton of money. Um maybe had you grown up with like two very loving parents, maybe had you grown up like with a different kind of like family, you wouldn't have had like any incentive to push yourself. Maybe you wouldn't have been as successful. Like who's to know? Like maybe you needing to prove to someone like made you who you are in like a really good way. So your ego is not necessarily a horrible thing that you need to like destroy. It's just about balancing 
your ego and like giving your ego like the attention and love that it deserves because your ego has something to prove because it doesn't necessarily like believe um like if you like believed in yourself fully and completely like you wouldn't have the need to prove anything if that makes sense um so for all you know like what you do in this life could all be for like one single moment um, one meeting or one interaction with someone that changes their life for the better. And then you go on to help a million people. Like maybe that horrible relationship that you had with your dad is going to help maybe one person, maybe a million people. Um, so, so basically to go over it again, your ego is in fear. Um, and that can come out as like being competitive um, like scarcity, feeling like there's not enough, or like separation. Um, so your ego will basically just show up trying to prove something. Maybe you feel um, inadequate. Maybe you feel insecure. So your ego um, likes to show off like all your designer stuff. Your ego, you know, posts, you know, a picture of your new Audi or like BMW, or you post like all your designer clothes and you're like you're doing it for the purpose of like oh look at me like look how cool cool I am um that's coming from your ego some people um post pictures of like their luxury stuff and like their lifestyle lifestyle as a means to like inspire other people um so you could have like two people doing the same thing but for completely different reasons like depending on like where they are um like emotionally. So, um, basically I, so I wrote this like a couple months ago, maybe like a month and a half ago. And I'm like laughing reading it because I wanted to like give a detailed description of my ego to give you guys like a better example of like my ego and what I'm working on. And so I'll just read it to you guys. It's like super embarrassing. But so basically I grew up really um, shy. I was a total nerd, got like straight A's all throughout high school and college. Um, I was taught that being cool was bad. Being a partier was bad. Um, so I grew up kind of like resenting like the cool popular kids, but at the same time, like I wanted to be a cool popular kid so badly. Um, and I think, like, the interesting is, is, like, I still care about being cool, and I still care about what people think of me. And on one hand, it's like, okay, like, I'm 24, like, you got to get over it. But on the other hand, um, your ego, you know, is, it doesn't necessarily, like, go away completely. Or maybe it does. For me, I still have my ego. Um and so I think it's important that like when you have these qualities about yourself that you want to get rid of or you want to heal or you want to change about yourself, like it's important to like forgive yourself for being human first and foremost, like forgive yourself for being a human being with human emotions, like forgive yourself for wanting attention, forgive yourself for being insecure, forgive yourself for starting unnecessary fights with your boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife, like forgive yourself for not knowing any better because if you did know better you wouldn't be doing what it is that you're doing so you have to first kind of like forgive yourself so where was I going okay so yeah I grew up like very shy smart like that was like like oh Demi's the smart one about um like the end of my junior year like going into my senior year of college I had just gotten out of a long-term relationship I, for whatever reason, decided I wanted to um, be what I call the shadow self. So your shadow self is the you that you've always wanted to be. Everybody has a shadow self. So for me, the me that I always wanted to be was cool, popular, um, attention kind of person. So I started dressing differently, started wearing tight skirts started doing my makeup, started doing my hair, started going out a lot and partying, um, started to be like more outgoing. So I became my shadow self, kind of like rebelling from like the goody two shoes that I was taught was like good growing up. 
through being like my shadow self, which I refer to as ED. Um, I just, I just think it's funny because it's like, I'm ED is Demi spelled backwards. So like my shadow self, I call her ED anyways. Um, so I decided to be my shadow self. And like with that came ego, like a lot of ego. So my ego became very, um, just almost like a mean girl, I would say. Like, I would just be super mean to guys. I would lead them on. I would go behind their back um, and just do, like, kind of mean things. Um, and so I'm just going to read you guys what I wrote because it's just funny. So Demi's ego does not feel pretty, but at the same time is so pretty and all <laughs> the chads everyone has a chad they want to get rid of all the chads down in pacific beach who drink beer and smoke from a bong want her so badly so obviously i'm being sarcastic but like this is like in my insecure 21 year old head like being in my ego like this is what i thought um my ego had no idea who she is still figuring that out to this day um so all she wanted to do when she was 21 was be with the one who she really loved but she was too good for that, aka she didn't feel good enough. So she wasted her time with random dudes who she knew would not leave her, but every now and again would give her a reason to worry so that she could have a challenge and try to get them. Like 21-year-old me loved a challenge. 21-year-old me only went after guys who didn't text me back, who were like the bad boys. Um and then I put real love equals tequila, tequila, attention from guys with skater bro shirts who don't respect her, and more tequila. No hate on any guy who wears skater bro shirts. Um, clearly, I was in love with any guy who had that like vibe when I was 21. So when I was 21, I became this Demi that was so insecure um, had no idea who she was, but as like a defense mechanism, as a way to like prove to other people, like, Hey, look at me. I can get a cool bad boy. I can party. I can get all this attention. Um, I became my like ego self. Like I became my shadow self. Um, I would say now, like being 24, almost turning 25, I definitely still have an ego. My ego now is more like, I hate looking stupid. I hate putting myself out there. I would do anything to not have to like talk in front of people. I would do anything to not look stupid and say the wrong thing. Like I'll give you an example. Like yesterday I went to the mall um, with my mom and my sister and I was like driving to go meet them so they, so my mom could drive us. Um, my mom was just like talking to me on the phone. And for some reason, like my ego, like decided to come out and was just totally like, Oh, by the way, mom, I don't want to offend you. But like, sometimes you're just really annoying. And you don't follow through. So like, make sure you tell me where you were. It's like, I had to like throw in like, a dad, like I had to just like, be rude and mean because um it's like a defense mechanism so that I don't have to be vulnerable um so that I don't have to um be like emotionally vulnerable so like I don't have to show any kind of weakness um so my ego right now is definitely like a know-it-all can't be wrong likes to have the last word um if I'm feeling insecure I will maybe post something on social media to like show people or like prove to people like, Oh no, I'm actually like really secure and confident. Um, and yeah, sometimes I am really confident. Sometimes I am, um, feeling really good about myself. Sometimes I do feel beautiful and other times I don't. Sometimes I feel just crappy and sometimes I feel not good enough. And sometimes I compare myself a lot. Actually, I compare myself a lot to other people. Um, but I'm working on it and the way that I have been working on that recently. And I think like a lot of these insecurities for me have come up recently because like I'm wanting to like be on social media more and like maybe teach classes or like talk about this kind of stuff. But something that's really helped me like tremendously 
when I'm feeling super insecure is um, this exercise that my teacher Marissa Morris taught me. So basically the exercise is um, first get grounded. Like you never want to go into a situation where you're like irritated or angry or upset. Like you always want to get grounded at least like um, feeling better because you can't really heal something like from that level. Like you can't heal anger with anger, if that makes sense. So um, I would go find like a quiet place for just like five minutes, go chill out, take deep breaths. Like breathing is so important right now, especially with like everything going on in the world. I would take deep breaths um, for me, like set an alarm maybe for like two minutes of just like deep breathing. Um, maybe put your feet in dirt or grass or something natural and like get to a place where you feel calm. Visual person, if you can visualize, I would try to visualize like a little tiny version of you, um, like in your heart, if you can, or you can just like put your hands over your heart. Um, so like think back to a time where you felt super just like, well, um, and then ask that you how old it is and you will hear like an immediate answer. So let's say like three months ago, you were pissed off because someone cut you off on the freeway. If you were to ask yourself how old that you is, like what's the first age that comes into your head? 19. Okay, sweet 19. Ask that you. Be like, hey, 19 year old. Um, if you want to talk out loud to yourself, go for it. Be like, hey, 19 year old, for example, what do you need? And you're going to hear um, something. Maybe you hear love. Maybe you hear security. Maybe you hear a boyfriend. Maybe you hear new friends. Whatever you hear, don't like judge yourself for what you hear. Um, and then whatever you hear, if you can visualize, um, just visualize giving yourself that. Like maybe visualize it coming like into you. Maybe visualize it as like a present and you pull the present into your heart. Maybe you um, just take a couple breaths and feel it. Or maybe just like by you just acknowledging that, like that's healing like in and of itself. Like by you just acknowledging um, what it is that that younger you needs, that's going to create a shift in your life. Um, and hopefully the next time you get into a, a situation like that, instead of becoming irritated or agitated or frustrated, you will be able to be like, oh, wait a second. This doesn't really bother me. Oh, wait, they're having a bad day. I'll have compassion for that person because nothing is personal, but everything feels personal when you're in your ego. Everything feels like people are coming at you. Everything feels like people are judging you and watching you and that you have to prove them wrong when you're in your ego. That's the ego's job. The ego's job is to remind you that you are um, a human and the ego's job is to keep you from like being the real you. Um, so yeah, I would try that. Um, and I think that's like all I wanted to say for now. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, first and foremost, I was really doing this for my own ego because my ego hates and stuff like this. Um, but I'm hoping in the hopes of like me being vulnerable and talking to you guys about like what I'm insecure about. Um, it could maybe just like help one person. Um, but yeah, okay, I'm gonna get going. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Maybe I will do um, something related to the ego in the future if enough people um, are looking for that. But thank you guys for watching and have an amazing day.